go to like whatever you've got. We started this I mean, sentence with you talking, Matthew. Uh, keep us rolling if you want. <laughs> or I'll just say hi to everybody just in case we put this online. Hello, everybody out there. This is Andrew, Matthew, and Joe. Uh, we are all artists from throughout the United States, and we wanted to get together and have a Zoom meeting. So um, we are all connected through the internet and whatnot. Um, I figured I'd let Joe and Matthew introduce themselves and talk about where their art has been going and what they've been doing and just have free flow conversation. So uh, Matthew, would you like to kick us off? Sure. Um, you got to mention the Ron Ranson Disciples group. So obviously that's a project between the three of us, but I mean, as far as I go with art, I decided to start trying to do some watercolor stuff about what was it, six years ago now? And my idea, I, I pr pr prior to that, I'd never painted. I didn't, I wasn't an art person. Um, there's artists in my family, you know, people who, it, it, a long line of decently semi-professional artists in my family. But I never felt like I had that, that urge to do stuff like that. And I didn't think I was really creative. So I happened upon this whole thing um, with wanting to try to, to do uh, illustrations of tree, uh, tree stuff, of, the, of uh, tree flaws, structural flaws in, in, with trees and also just generally trees uh, to, to just kind of show people what I'm talking about with regard to trees. You know, I'm a, an arborist, professional arborist. I've been an arborist for a long time. So a lot of the the literature that we have that I would want to show people, hey, this is what we want to do. You know, we want to put a cable in and it's because of this structural defect. That's what I was thinking. Hey, I, I want to illustrate these and eventually write a book on the topic. And while I was, <laughs> while I was grocery shopping at Walmart, um, I just went over to the art section and got a watercolor set. And I thought, all right, that's what I need to do this. I, I picked up a pad of paper, had no idea. So it was some really crummy, uh, it was a Daler Roney, like bottom of the line Daler Roney brand. So they were terrible watercolors and there was probably, I think 20, 20 colors and everything. And I set in to try to do it that evening. And it just, uh, it was, not like I expected. I mean, it didn't, nothing worked. It, it kind of went all over the place, uh, but I didn't really get discouraged. I just went to YouTube. Uh, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to get on YouTube and see some watercolor demos. And, you know, I started watching them. It started with, uh, uh, what's the, what's the guy, Steve, S watercolor studio. I don't know. He's on YouTube. Is he's he's on a mind of watercolor. Mind of Watercolor. So I ran into Mind of Watercolor and he kind of, I realized I didn't have the right stuff from the get go and, and got the right paper. And we're talking of this, this is a, a matter of days. Cause when I get my mind on something, it's like, okay, I'm going to get the right stuff, blah, blah, blah. Jumped on there. Um, after you start looking at things on YouTube, you know, you get that auto play where they, they just start playing stuff. Well, it happened to be kind of around Christmas time, and I kept hearing this hair dryer in the background of the house. Like I would wander away from the, I just play YouTube on the TV, watercolor videos. How am I going to get to the bottom of this? I want to do it. And I'm hearing this hair dryer, and I'm thinking my teenage daughter is just drying her hair all day long. I'm hearing <laughs> it in the other room, and I'm like, what the hell's going on? Well, I go in and I see Stephen Cronin in there just working that hair dryer. And on an autoplay video, and I was like, whoa, look at this. It looked exactly like what I had in my mind that I wanted to do. Um, landscapes, trees, that kind of stuff. And he had that great big brush and everything, which my first impression of it, I couldn't tell what it was because back in those videos, he had uh, the handle was cut off on his ache, and it was just almost dark brown. It looked almost like a plastic paintbrush to me like a house brush, uh, like chip brush. Yeah. And I dug into it and thought, man, this is unbelievable. Of course, right after him, they put on the Ron Ranson deal, 
with the um, three demos by Mike Porter, Ron's friend, you know, uh, who, who filmed and painting. I had to get this Hake immediately. I think I went on to Amazon, found the Hake. Couldn't wait to get this thing in. Uh, got all the right colors with the cotton. I did everything that both Steve Cronin said to do and Ron Ranson did. So I didn't have any trouble like trying to think about what colors I wanted to try or anything like that. Never, never had, I have no desire to try colors in general. I stick with that palette because I'm, I've got kind of, I know what I like to do and that's what it turns out that I, I, I have a long ways to go doing that. And, and I'm still, you know, I'm still satisfied with what, with, with that part of it. So that's how I got here. Let me uh, interject for a moment. Um, your, 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 your goal towards painting like the original tree thing and showing people what was wrong. I remember Albrecht Durer. Does anybody know how to pronounce that? Yeah. Correctly? Is that, yeah, the... he was, yeah, he's one of the classics. Yeah. He had, uh, for a physician, I think he was having pain on his side. He drew a picture of himself pointing to the location that he had a pain in and sent that to the physician. Y'all ever hear that story or see that picture? Yeah, I've oh, seen that in the, the, the super detailed rabbit that he did and the uh, little you know selections of landscape that he would do and they were ultra detailed. Yeah, so um, Matthew, you had mentioned the Ron Ranson um, thing and um, Joe, I know, is going to wind up mentioning. I mean, that's where everything's going to tie together, I think, essentially, with this conversation. Yeah, so, definitely. Uh, Joe, why don't you introduce yourself and then kind of lead into how we all met each other through the whole Ron Ranson thing? Well, I'll go through it pretty quick. Joe Menza, obviously, here. I started about six months, actually, after uh, <clears throat> Matthew. And the funny thing about it was I've always been interested in painting. I used to paint little model figurines and stuff like that. And I always had a little creative side. I used to make little comic books when I was in school and stuff when I was a kid. But um, I had been showing my kids because Bob Ross was starting to make a comeback because of the internet and Twitch and stuff. And so he was like all of a sudden all over again. I'm like, yeah, I remember this guy. He was amazing. I mean, I remember my dad used to watch him on PBS and he, I'd come in the room and he'd go, look at this guy, you know, and this is going back. And I'd be like, yeah, I watch him too when he comes on. And um, so I thought my kids had not having seen this, I showed them and I'm like, check this guy out. And they're watching and they're like all into it. And I'm like, yeah, this guy could start coming back. So as kind of a gag that Christmas, they bought me a Bob Ross painting kit, thinking it would just be a funny joke gift, really. And uh, I'm like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to use this. And I think I set up in the kitchen or something. And I painted like a picture. I followed like the DVD and I painted and it turned out pretty well. I mean, for a first painting, it really did. And I thought, I'm uh I really like this, but I don't like this oil aspect. I don't have the place to do it. There was a little bit of a smell and it was a mess. And I thought I had such a good time. Let me explore some other mediums. And I thought, what's cleaner than this? I tried pastel and I was doing still life and fruit. And my wife was all about, oh, I really like the fruit. And, you know, da, da, da. and so I really wasn't even doing landscapes necessarily a little bit. And then I thought, well, I don't like the, the, the pastels was a lot of work because you got to do a lot of this and a lot of blending on the paper and you get chalk on your fingers and they're dusty and you got to protect them and yada, yada, yada. And I tried like acrylic and I tried a bunch of different mediums. And then one day I thought, well, I'll try watercolor. And I did like Matthew and I bought like a cheap set, had the little circle cakes in there. And I sat down, I was just fooling around playing. And then I painted a little lighthouse and I thought, it's kind of fun, but in the back of my mind, I was like, this is, this is like little kids stuff. Little kids use this. So I thought, but you know what? As good as the general public is, there's somebody out here using watercolors like this, and they're fantastic at it. I just knew it. There's a Bob Ross of watercolors out there. And so I started looking around, and that's when I found, uh, uh, who's the English guy from, uh, uh, with the white hair, uh, I'm drawing a blank. Alan, uh, these are our these are our mentors, yet we're forgetting their names. I, I, yeah, I'm on camera. Alan, so, um, Al, Frank Alan, Clark, uh, how's that? Frank Frank Clark. Frank Clark. I Clark. found him first, 
And he had, just like you, he had the hake, but I hadn't seen the Ron Ranson hake yet. So I right away ordered it. It took like three weeks for this thing to come from like Ireland or wherever he's from. I got yeah. it and I did the sepia painting with this hake brush and it came out fantastic. And so now I'm like hooked. So I'm like, okay, what's the next thing that I'm going to do here? So I started watching all of his videos and I thought, well, the way he paints is very good for beginners, but there's still got to be that Bob Ross guy of watercolor. So I kept looking, 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 looking. And then I did come across Stephen Cronin. And I saw what Stephen Cronin, I'm like, this is more toward what I'm looking for. This is it. But then when I was watching him, I'm like, he's a pretty young guy. He's really good. And I thought, but I don't know that he necessarily is the inventor of this. There's got to be a somebody, a, a wizard behind the curtain, you know? And then I started reading through the comments and that's when I found the Ron Ranson connection. I'm like, aha. And then I started looking him up. I found him. And then through comments, I think in the video, that's when I found Matthew. And to my uh, discouragement, I found out that he had just passed away, Ron Ranson. And that's when Matthew and I start talking about we need to do something, something to honor because we were just so into it for that period of time. And that's when Matthew created the group um, and we started bringing people into this no fuss, you know, method of painting with using the big brush, which is the Ron Ranson Hank or Hake brush that uh, you now see so many people using online. Used to just feed Stephen Cronin. Now so, everybody's using the brush. <laughs> the, the way the way you and I actually met, Joe, we were on Facebook, but we were um, we were members of one of those really big watercolor groups. Oh, it was I a different it group. Simply, oh. I think it was simply, and simply yeah. watercolors. You know, there were a lot of members back then, uh, but it was anything but simply. I mean, uh, but I would see you post stuff. And I would post stuff and I could see it in there, you know, I was like, this is a Hank user. You, you could know? see the influence. <laughs> yeah, I saw it in that. And I, I actually, I sent you an instant message. Yeah, said, it's coming hey, back to you. <laughs> yeah, I said, hey, are you, is this what you're doing? You know, because it's not like anything in this group, you know. And and you and I kind of passed some comments back and forth about, about That's right. what we, you know, hey, you know, I learned this and you threw a tip or two over at me. I threw a tip or two at you. And, um, and yeah, you did, did matter of fact. And I remember it well. I remember the tip well. You may not remember it. The horizon line. Yeah, That's yeah, good. you remember. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I really wasn't paying much attention to that. And you mentioned that actually ever since then. It's like, yeah, that's right. I should have learned that from Frank Clark with his horizon line thing all the time. But yeah, yeah, I started looking at it more critically and I thought, you know, this is good. We need this critical, you know, uh, helpful criticism, but in a good way yeah. to help each other so along the, and, you know, build it up. That, that whole thing with water and the horizon line, the only time that you are really allowed to like show it like this is if you're painting from a ship. And the ship happens to be in the foreground, you know. That's the only time you're going to really make sense out of that, unless you're trying to, I guess. Show there are ways you system. could get away with it if the shoreline is moving back and on an angle. I don't know if but, I have an but, example uh, of that back here. I mean, yeah, that's, that picture that's back the, there, you can see it's not perfectly straight, but the water gives you the impression that you're going that way. So there's yep, sometimes I, I think you can get away with it. I think you, you can get, can get away, away with, with it. it to a point. Well, you because know. I think though, Joe, on this one, your horizon line is straight. You can see where you've got it straight, and then you're cutting through with showing that uh, the the fact that the water is not along the horizon because you're showing distance there. Right. Or something so you like see, this, you where see you multiple have, distances. If you look at this one, there really is no straight. Th there is no straight horizon line. So you have kind of some different but, angles there are situations you, where you can get away with it but you've given keys though so see how here's clues to that straightness where you put those uh you've got those horizontal lines not going all the way across but right. they anchor the thing as flat and 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 level with how you've uh put those there so that i mean that's just advancing look we all start with that flat horizon right. in the back and that was where we were at that 
at that time we were looking at because we, we were drawing you know endless views to the sea with some mountains on one side or something like that yeah, everything um, was, was very two-dimensional everything was very two-dimensional right. you always had a straight line foreground background and sky and then yeah. as i started going along i'm like i want more hills and more plains and then i started mm -hmm. wanting to go backward like in in perspective in other words layers going back to give you depth so all of those things are like your baby steps leading forward yep. and just, we had this group to say okay we're going to look at each other in this way and stay in this no fuss mode and build each other up in a very pleasant environment that was a tight-knit group yeah very very tight-knit but all over the world i mean and, you know, I actually, I ran some of the, if you go into the admin area, you can look up tools for the, the group and group quality. We've right. got like a really high rate of people participating and participating can be just looking through and clicking something that's counting as participating. Mm -hmm. But, and we've got a high, high percentage rate of, of people participating among our membership. What do we have? 1300, something like that. Oh, you mean participating? Because we're all, I think we almost have, I thought we almost were at 10,000 or something. No, it's not that no, high. No, no, no. Wait, what are we at? No. Oh yeah, we passed a thousand. I'm thinking of, yeah. Yeah, we did pass a thousand. It sounds small, but it's a group with it, sort of the it, same. It is, it is small. And I think that's what makes the quality high because, you know, when we were over at Simply Watercolors, there were 10,000 people in there and you get these, you know these these this work that is highly highly professional right it, it, you know if you know anything about watercolor and you're looking at this stuff you know this this person worked for hours on mm -hmm. you know planning and and all of that to do some of the work you see on those things but you come over to our group and you've got people who show you you know show you some compositionally I think you learn a lot about composition when you're on the fast and loose because everything hinges on it. Everything that you throw out on the painting is fast and loose. So you can't really depend on your fast and loose work to be super detailed or, or interesting on its own. It has to hinge on a composition. Composition, the, the composition and a bit of atmosphere and a bit of mood. An atmosphere. Yeah, a bit of mood, injury. which Ron Ranson's a lot of his had. Um, yep. He would have there you know, were the, starting with the atmosphere. sky, starting with the sky, which was the key book and video to really start you off was Ron Ranson's skies. Well, Stephen Cronin began with Ron Ranson's skies. Uh, according to, you know, at this point, we've been watching Stephen Cronin for more than half a decade. Can you believe that? Yeah, I think seven years, six I'm years. Exactly but anyway, he's over ten years. years. He's been on. He's been on YouTube over ten years. He's been on YouTube for over ten years. I'm saying that you and I got into looking to watching him. But oh, halfway. He he early on when he would when he does mention Ron Ranson, he mentions skies. That's what brought him there. And you oh, yeah. can tell with Stephen that it were it was the sky stuff that he built on. So you can right. certainly see that he came from Ron Ranson's Skies book. He did He um, did the Ron Ranson meets Bob Ross, actually. Because if you talk to him, he'll tell you. He'll tell you a lot about, you know, a lot of Bob Ross watching. So you'll see he, in yep, some of those does. early ones where he goes across and leaves the light in the center. That's yes. Bob Ross. And the they technique with the hit brush is Ron Ranson. So those two kind of yeah. things fuse together, which is his own. He should be credited probably more than he is for kind of fusing those two techniques into these edible bite-sized YouTube videos. We got to ask, I, mean, I, I, uh, we, we, I think we got to ask Stephen the reception to Bob Ross in England and the UK, being in that we usually have a lot of watercolorists and teachers come out of the UK. And now we have a painter from the US influencing someone in the UK. Oh, like Ron Ranson is Ron Ranson is from England. No, I'm sorry, not Ron Ranson. Uh, Bob Ross. Oh yeah, so well, like, like how is the reception to Bob Ross in the UK and um, assimilating the Bob Ross approach into the Ron Ranson approach? I think he's worldwide 
I think it's worldwide. He, he may not be accepted maybe in certain circles of art, but I think he's, I think Bob Ross is beloved worldwide. I mean, he's yeah. just a phenomenon that'll probably never go away. And it's, it's a combination of things, not just, you know, it, it's his dedication that you can feel to actually painting and the simplified method of doing it, which in one way, you don't want to boil down a method of a pet. You, you take the creative angle out, but in the same way you draw people in and what drew me, although I really am, am loving art, I'm also sort of drawn in by the technique as much as I am the result. It's like a magic trick. You don't start actually liking magic until you see the trick and then you want to do the trick. So you get pulled in by the fascination of how it was done and then you want to do it too. So when you see Bob Ross or you see Ron Ranson and you see this unfold in a very short period of time, that is what drew me in was, was the combination of those two things. Yeah, so so not even like the result of the rabbit out of the hat. It is the actual pulling motion of the rabbit out of the hat that amazes. That's right. That's right. So, and don't forget, we have Bill Alexander too, who influenced Bob Ross. He's German, you know. He was of German descent, so he's got a sort of a European connection there as well. So I think anybody would be fascinated by the speed and technique in which you can pull off, you know, a painting that looks like it took weeks and months. Yes, yeah. that's what I like. I like doing that a la prima. You know, if you're going to do a painting, you do the painting and you're not going back to it because your mood, I mean, for me, I can't do the coming back to a painting and all of that because my mood changes. You know, if I go back to a painting, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be in that place and I'd have to be putting myself into an unfinished painting uh, in, in building from a different, uh, different mood. So I, that's why I, the, the whole thing fast and loose, you get out your paper, you get, you know, put your paints out. I do squeeze my paints out, um, and, and paint. And, and it, if what you came up with is good, it's good. You know, if it's not so great, you do another one. Yeah. Yeah. There's not a lot of time invested there. I mean, it's sort of, sort of like the attention deficit, uh, the, perfect, the perfect vehicle for that. If you don't want to spend days and yeah. weeks on, you know, different, the same project, which I don't. I went to a painting group in my local area, and I must have painted three or four watercolors while everyone else was working on the same project that they'd have been working on for weeks. It was good stuff, don't get me wrong. One guy was working on Venice, Italy, and you know, the whole time I was there, he painted like one little small element. It's like, that's not for yeah. me. <laughs> that's not for me, man. Um, I, you know, I, I do. I, I run with a plein air uh, group of friends, very informal. Um, and these are successful artists, professional, beautiful work. And my I think I turn out like five paintings on, you know, just one outdoor painting session. And yeah. for the most part, they'll, they'll turn one solid one out. But normally they go back and do studio studio work on the, those paintings. These are oil painters. Um, wow. So to be fair, you know, but um, but the whole thing about jumping in there and really within a small period of time, being able to capture my mood and feeling on whatever painting I'm doing, that's I think you can see that in paintings. You can see that sort of, oh, this was done spontaneously with this atmosphere, you know? And if, and I can't, I can't have the same mood and atmosphere, uh, you know, on return visits to, to my. Uh, I, think, I think watercolor really, that was the purpose of it, or at least that's how it was mostly widely used back, you know, going back to the, you know, Renaissance days and beyond is that, artists use that to capture a moment and then would take those pieces into the studio and then work on their oils. But Absolutely. over the years, obviously watercolor became a beloved thing unto itself to where it became respected and people desired the watercolor. You know, that, I think I that, think that, that, I I think that said, is, yeah. that is due, that comes from the, this English watercolor tradition on, on, I mean, the English watercolor tradition is what we're basically doing. That's what Ron did, you know, 
see go and Wesson did looking back to Constable and Turner and um, and Cotman, you know, mm -hmm. um, those landscape, that atmospheric, you know, muted palette, um, you know, it's, it's, it is kind of impressionist, but it's not impressionism. Um, but I think that, uh, you know, that's where this whole thing comes from. Uh, yeah, so and Ron was obviously influenced by Seagull and Wesson, as he's mentioned it, and written books right. on those artists. So, you know, he was influenced yeah. by them. So it's interesting to go back and say, okay, who influenced you? Who influenced you? And I think you said this one time that we're all working in this thing that's been handed down over hundreds of years that we're each like nibbling our little bits off of and then putting yeah. our own spin into it. At least that's what I try to do. I don't want to copy one particular person. I, want, I take a little, I like this, I like this, I like this. And then my recipe maybe comes through. Yeah, I, I've, I've gotten away. I, I think I have my own style. You certainly, actually all three of us, you can recognize things we've done. Right. Uh, but, but at the basis of it, man, you really see that how much we owe these guys, you know, on what we do, you know, how much we owe them for compositional understanding, for for really just the hobby in general. Um, for looking, you know, you, you beat that learning curve by looking at the people before you and it's not copying. Shaves it's, off a lot of time. Yeah, no need yeah, to reinvent the wheel. You know? Yeah, it keeps you in there though, so that you don't give up, you know. And you that's why I did what I did was I thought I came to find painting at a later age in life, and I thought more people should be exposed to this, and it, more people will be inspired, kind of a la Bob Ross to inspire other artists to come about and take up this hobby, as you call it. And mm -hmm. uh, enough, you know, enough people will you know, maybe come to it a little bit sooner and have more time, you know, to work on it. And that's why I started doing, I, I thought, you know, I'd love to do videos and show what I'm doing, but I don't want to come across as, hey, I'm some experienced, I'm teaching you. And that's why I thought, watch what I'm doing and watch my progression. And also, I'm going to be doing a lot of experimental stuff. And you can say, oh, look at what happened. He tried using white. Everybody said, don't use white or don't do this or try not to do that. And I already did it for you because I've showed it in a video and this is what happens when you do this. And maybe you could say, well, that looks like a fun technique. I'll incorporate it or nah, that didn't really work. I don't, I can skip that. So it's experimental yeah. watercolor in a lot of ways What I'm doing is constantly experimenting, you know, exactly. Yeah, it, it reflects back to like art, art history books. You look at something and they might be like, see how blah, 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 Rembrandt's use of chalk to highlight the hairline emphasizes the, you know, th that's essentially, you know, how we can view your art, Joe, you know, saying, see how Joe used white to accentuate the sky. Yeah, we got it's that in real chalk. time. It's in yeah. real time. You know, one time I was at the museum, I was years and years ago before I even got interested in painting. And there was a lady there and she was showing some painting on a wall, might have been Picasso or something like that. And she said, you see here, this is what he was doing. And he was trying to do this and this and by doing this and this line. And I walked by and I was like, how do they know that? They don't know that from that. <laughs> He's not around to confirm. But then when you start actually doing the art, you're like, you know, there is a, a, there is oh, a yes. method to the madness. And I came to have more respect for that. You know, I was watching you know, a video I, last night where they were talking about concave and convex curves and how the body is mainly uh, made up of the, the convex curves. And you know, they showed it in the master drawings and you're like, wow, yeah. Cause you know, you have that round of the muscle, you have the round of the elbow, you have the round of the wrist, the round of the knuckle. And you're like, wow, there was a lot of use of that. And they, they must've, they had to have been thinking about that. I, I, I think the masters. <laughs> Hard to say. I mean, you know, there's psychology, psychological things that go into it, color and how things, you know, hit you. And, and I think that's why things kept evolving to where now it became something really wanted to make an impact. Everything had already been done as far as, you know, portraits and things like that. You know, you have Picasso that does cubism and he does really sort of bizarre contorted things. And then you're like, whoa, look at that, you know. So sometimes you take something and turn it inside out to get like a really 
good effect. I mean, I'm not trying to do anything abstract, although I am interested in abstract to the point to where what lines and what colors and combination of things actually sort of stimulate different parts of the mind. I think that's what pulls you in. It's color, it's, you know, position and different things like that. In abstract, you can go so many different ways, although landscapes are, you know, just what I enjoy. I like the serene. It's somewhere I want to be. It calms me. It's a great anxiety inhibitor, as I always promote it as. Well, yeah. we have two minutes left on this uh, Zoom. I could either stop recording, log out, log back in. I don't know if it would give us more time or if you guys want to use this two minutes to wrap it up. It's up to you. Well, you haven't talked no. much. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm loving listening to you guys talk. I think that this is fantastic. This is exactly what I wanted to see. Um, you're you're going to have about... to come back in because you need more than two minutes to share. But one, one thing I can tell you, if you're going to send this on to the group, the Ron Ranson group, I just I pulled up the stats. So we have we have about 1,200 members. Um, and we have an activity rate of well, 879 I mean... members. Wow. So out, out of 1,200, we've got almost 1,000 of them that are active, meaning they're looking, they click, they comment, they post. That's pretty high. We have an average daily, it looks like, of 450 members, more than 450 members daily that do something on the site. Look, click, read, yeah, that's great. comment, post. Uh, so that is really phenomenal as far as a uh, community goes, because I'm in other groups and, you know, there's always like 10 people out of 10,000 that take up the whole group. But it seems to not be the case in our small group. Yeah. How much time we got left? We have less than a minute. So I'm going to stop. I say leave the audience wanting more and we'll do another one. I mean, that would be my take. Awesome. Yeah, I certainly. Uh, I it was fantastic actually like talking and seeing you guys. And I think that hearing you all's backgrounds and the way you guys tied everything together was really awesome. So I really enjoyed hearing that. And I think other people will, you know, the story. Yeah, I mean, we could do more and delve into certain topics and kind of get on a particular topic that we discussed beforehand, you yeah, know, yeah, we got, we got the background out of the way. Just got to figure out where this shares now, where this gets saved to. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I'll link to wherever you put it. So, well, I mean, on my computer. So, once that stops, maybe um, Matthew might have some sort of idea.